Hey there guys, let me talk to you for a second. I started this series three weeks ago. We are now on episode number 22. I have enjoyed every single step along the way. However, we have a little bit of a problem here. The problem is we're getting a consistent amount of views of every single episode, but 52% of the people watching this video right now are not subscribed, and there's a very good chance that you've seen my previous videos of this series. I have one simple question. Why not? If you enjoy my videos and if they're recommended to you, why not hit the subscribe button? It's not going to change how much I show up. It's literally going to make no impact on your life at all. However, it's going to add to my subscriber number and it's going to mean the world to me and lets me know that you really appreciate the series and you enjoy watching it. Simple as that. All right, done. I'm done talking. I'm not going to pester you about it for the rest of the episode. Great. Good afternoon, gamers. Welcome back to Animal Crossing episode 22. It's Thursday afternoon. I wanted to start development on the area behind and above the museum. The first step is we need to pick out the right fence that's going to be visible from ground level. So when I'm sitting in my Zen garden with Sebastian hanging out and I pan my camera up, I want there to be a nice contrast, a nice visibility. And while sitting in the Zen garden, the short fences are really kind of dwarfed by the huge fossils that are in front of them. In addition, the colors are somewhat similar, so they don't pop, they don't stand out. So I ended up deciding on cedar trees all along the cliffside, and maybe like a thin rope fence that isn't very visible. And one of the things is I don't have a lot of cedar trees on my entire island, so because of that, I only go to like 10 of them, and the 10 of them are like guaranteed to drop me the amount of coins, and the amount of wasps, and the amount of furniture that I get for the day. Because the rest of the trees on my island are all just fruit trees, and those don't drop those things. While I was at it, it was actually kind of difficult to navigate through here, so I decided to lay down a simple path, making my way through the trees. And then I decided, hey, we could make this in sort of a hiking trail. And this hiking trail could have a place that campers can hang out. We have the whole campsite thing going on. We just got that sign from Pocket Edition. So I added some barb fencing along the route, interchanged with the rope fencing. I used the camp sign to decorate the small campsite area. And I, once the campsite location is moved here, I'm gonna dive into this a little bit more. But for now, I put down these two mountain bikes in their own little parking area because, hey, we're on a mountain and you got some bikes, you wanna go mountain bike and go for it. I made a small dirt patch for the campfire and the stove. I laid out some tiki torches to keep the mosquitoes away and marked out a 4x4 campsite that I'm probably going to be moving tomorrow or starting the move tomorrow. One area that I pass by every single day that I've been absolutely clueless on what I want to do with is the small overhang cliff top between the Zen Bridge and the new campsite trail. And I've seen some things online, I've messed around with some ideas, but there was someone named Sloth Crossing on Instagram, and they have like a beautiful clifftop cafe. And I decided that I kind of wanted to base it off of that, but sadly, where my staircase is currently, I can't really do too much, and I think this looks horrible. So after I move my campsite, I'm then going to destroy this staircase, and then I'm gonna be able to build a new staircase so I have proper level management here. And then we can take another look at our Clifftop Cafe. And for those asking in my previous videos, I've also added the path lines and the Pac-Man fruit to my creator code. So you can download it once you unlock the Able Sister shop. My creator code is listed on screen and I might make it a pinned comment, I don't know. While we're talking about patterns, someone tagged me in a post on Twitter of someone who made a really tacky arcade floor and I love it. Like, you look at this and you're like, okay, this is exactly what an arcade floor is supposed to look like. So if you want it, just pause the video and copy the creator code for yourself. Overnight, Paula's house is going to move and Goose's house slash fitness area is going to be able to be expanded upon a little bit. So for now, I just want to format a little bit. I decided that the workout area should be a community area and not just Goose's yard. So I'm going to make him a very small yard, like over here to the left, and a much larger workout area to the right. And until tomorrow when Paula leaves, we're just going to leave this as is. Another one of our in-work, <laughs> under construction areas. Honestly, I should buy like a whole bunch of those under construction signs and just leave them at all of my projects. 
And just as I was leaving there, a green balloon overhead, uh, uh, I popped it, and it was the last cherry blossom recipe that I needed for the entire collection. Perfect, because tomorrow, well, narration, today, April 10th, is the Northern Hemisphere's last day for the cherry blossoms to appear until next year. I think you know what we're crafting now. So here's all the things that you can make with the Cherry Blossom Collection. Not pictured are the lanterns, which we've already made four of for our Zen Bridge. There's also the grassy cherry petal floor that matches these walls. And there's a pink wood wall that matches this floor. And there's also a pouchette and a wand. I wasn't going to wear those. I'm not going to lie, though. It's really neat seeing this wall shed its petals. If you're watching this video on April 10th, then either at midnight or 5 a.m., the Cherry Blossom event is going to end, and you're not going to be able to get any more. So, tonight, you might want to grind, otherwise, who knows, eight months from now, you may end up paying exuberant amounts to trade with someone. As sad as it is that the Cherry Blossom event is ending tomorrow, thankfully, the Bunny Day event ends on the 12th. And it would have been so nice if these two events didn't overlap. I feel like the beautiful, calm atmosphere of the cherry blossoms is ruined by Easter eggs everywhere. And now that I have all the cherry blossom recipes and plenty of petals in reserve, like I am grinding up and I have about a hundred extra cherry petals, I think the Hilltop Cafe, I might mix this with the Zen Bridge to keep the same aesthetic moved over. And I read in the comments on the previous video that to get the Nook Shopping app on your phone, you have to do 100 purchases. And there's also an achievement that helps mark how many purchases you've made. And it turns out I've only done 25, and you're capped at ordering yourself five things a day, so it looks like it's gonna be a 15 day minimum until I get it. And again, just summing up yesterday's video, making the dodo blush does absolutely nothing for you. But it never hurts, and I'm flush with Nook Miles, so let's take some flights. My first trip of the night is a basic river. I do need to grab some weeds while I'm here. And also, there was no DIY on the shore, so even making him blush doesn't guarantee the DIYs. It does nothing again. My second island was bamboo, which is great, because I need some more young bamboo stalks and some shoots. And my third island was the same as my first. And that concluded my trips for the evening. <laughs> And I was talking with some people, and I learned that if you gift items from Nook Shopping, it adds to your Shop To It achievement counter. So in theory, I don't need to wait 25 days of ordering myself stuff, or 15 days, whatever it was. Instead, I could just mail 74 gnomes to everyone on my friends list. Correction, the cardboard box is only 120 bells. I'm mailing 74 cardboard boxes to people. And it turns out that mailing stuff to your friends with the Nook ATM also works toward the popular pen pal achievement. So you get to bypass the 200 bell fee of writing out a letter. It automatically generates a letter for you. And if you do cardboard boxes, then you're only spending 120 instead of 200. Sounds like a win-win. It's like almost an hour later of me mailing cardboard boxes to everyone on my friends list, and I did not tell them what I was doing, so them watching this video now is gonna be like, oh, that's why Austin mailed me two cardboard boxes last night. And I'm done. And I get the level four mail achievement, I get the level four Nook mile achievement, and I get the Nook shopping app on my phone now, which is fantastic. Any item that I catalog throughout my entire playthrough, I can just whip out my phone, order it from my phone. I don't need to go to the Nook ATM for that anymore. Great. Good morning, everyone. So last night was the Pokemon Raid Den update, and I was up till like 2.30 in the morning posting a video. And for some reason, the game audio cut out of that. Because, I don't know, OBS has this weird glitch that sometimes multi-track audio doesn't record properly. So, future Austin, if we lost all sound for content in any of these videos, I'm sorry. Good morning, Isabel! Right now on Plays, it's 9.55 a.m. There's really not any news to speak of today. Did anyone turn into the documentary show that was on TV yesterday? It was all about the history of water skiing, and actually it was quite informative. For one thing, I learned that talking about water skiing puts me to sleep. Reading this text is putting me to sleep, and I just woke up. 
First things first, I want to see if anything crossbred. Things have already crossbred. Beautiful. Are you pink? Great. Are you are you a pink rose? You sure are. Are you are you pink lilies? What's with everything being pink right now? Yep. It's a pink day, everyone. That's it. That's that that's all the new stuff. I do like that I can kind of like catalog all of the colors that I've achieved so far. And now realize I have the same flower in two places. This is almost all of the uh the lilies. Nice. Oh this house looks so perfect here. I love it. It's so beautiful. So quaint. These boys are open. My hot item of the day is the brick oven. And golly, I have a lot of clay. This requires clay, a little bit of iron, and a little bit of wood, but much more clay than anything else. This may be my one opportunity to sell off all of my clay. How much do the nooklings want to buy my oven for? Can you carry better things? Things that I don't have? Wow, 7,640 bells. Okay, that's pretty dope. What is this? Cream and sugar, oh. Perfect, that's gonna go great for my little cafe. Awesome. Good morning, Sable. You have a little present for me. It's some pattern fabric, I made it myself. You know you could customize furniture by switching out the parts that are made of fabric? I um thought you might want to use my fabric for doing that. I worked really hard making these, I hope you like using them. Awesome! Is this the thing that we've been talking to Sable to do? Wow, that sounds really cold. No, I don't mean... <laughs> I enjoy talking to Sable and learning about the backstory, but like, I know that there's like a, a quote unquote end goal or something that you unlock by talking to Sable. And I'm thinking that this is the thing. Last night I visited a friend and I was able to get the palm tree lamp, which I think is one of the coolest items in the game. And I eventually want to get the DIY and make a whole bunch of these in all the various colors. Because like, looking at these colors, like, ah, uh, that just screams like, Put that in the basement, pump some lo-fi hip-hop for studying. That's what's up. Yes, this writing chair has an option for patterns. Ooh. Yep, you could totally do the bed. Oh, those are dope. Oh, I love these triangles. Wait, it says natural at the top? Am I gonna get different categories of patterns? Ugh. There is so much to unlock with this woman. But we have some mail. Oh, something from Label. You were very helpful the other day. Here are two tailor tickets as a thank you. You could exchange them for items. 3,000 bells or less. Awesome. Thanks, Label. Cherry blossom petals dance upon the wind like some kind of bizarre battalion of breeze ballerinas. A smile graces my face until I watch the petals fall. And it went well until... Achoo. Um, what did my mom send me? Mom's tissue box. <laughs> nice. A trash can that's not blue. Awesome. A poster of Raymond, sweet. Thought you could use another pinball machine. An antique clock. One to give you something weird for your birthday, and I haven't seen one of these on your island yet, so enjoy. P.S. One of my villagers has been talking about you. Nice. What's the weird thing for my birthday? A raccoon figurine. Yep, that's definitely weird. Here's a little summer for the kitchen. Thanks, Dashy. Not sure if you have this. Thanks, CQ. I hope you don't already have one. Figure you'd find it cool. Thanks, Gala. Question. Best thing to happen to you in the past couple of years? Hashtag mealtime with Austin. Hashtag new video idea. Uh, past couple of years? I mean, you know, I only started YouTube here like three, four years ago. So I definitely say that's one of the best things to happen to me. Here's a bootleg Batman costume. Also, happy birthday. I already have an Imperial bed, but thank you, Lewis. Celeste gave me a dupe DIY for this dope chair. Awesome, thanks, Squirtles. Why does a chicken coop only have two doors? Because if it had four, it'd be a chicken sedan. <laughs> nice. Found this in Nook's Cranny. Hope you can find a cool place for it. Awesome. Someone sent me a desktop computer. Now I just need an Epic Gamer desk. My favorite thing is like, I love getting these things and then it's kind of like a challenge for me, like how can I incorporate this? What can I do with this? Like that's kind of my favorite thing about about getting presents from you guys. Hope you can find a cool place for this. P.S. Thanks for the box. So yeah, I mailed pretty much every one of my friends empty cardboard boxes and they don't know why yet. Space. This should help with your Rodney issue. What's gonna help with my Rodney issue?
You must defeat my Shoryuken to stand a chance for game room. I don't know what a Shoryuken is. Also, I probably said it wrong. Thought it'd be nice for the game room. Thanks, Emmy. From Glitch. Thought you might need this. Enjoy. Thanks, my dude. <laughs> Solid. Bonus package. Cat box to go with cat tower? Nice. I do not have a P.O. box for real mail. Lamella is my favorite flavor of lamb. What, Zoe? <laughs> Cardboard bed? <laughs> Who knew there was a whole wide variety of cardboard? It's a whole new world of cardboard. One of the cardboard boxes you sent me was addressed to some P. Sherman guy from 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Had this inside. I love that we're now making the cardboard box jokes. A clownfish model. Oh, he's so cute. I'm gonna treasure him, thank you. I don't know why in the middle of today's video I decided to give my my arcade like a whole a whole refresh here, but I did. I decided that my TV would go here. Apparently we're watching, was that? That almost looked like the, the curry making a screen from Pokemon. Well anyways, here's the Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch because this one has the dock and the regular Switch didn't come with the dock. I now have two of the same arcade machines. I decided to get rid of the slot machine because it's a different sound and the two clashing is just, oh God, it is so rough on the ears and soul. I have my gaming PC over here <laughs> next to my VR headset. And just like a real gamer, it's just, <laughs> it's just on cardboard boxes. <laughs> My palm tree lamp is here and oh god do I love this thing. I also ordered a bunch of lava lamps from the Nook Shopping, so I have those illuminating the whole area so I no longer have to have that light on or the cold white light on. Now it's just this. Over here we have all the posters on the wall. I have my effects rack right under my amp. We have our pedals down there and we have a guitar over here, mini fridge and the cooler. Uh, I also just learned that there are more than one pinball machines. Are there more than one arcade machines? If so, I gotta catch them all. And I've now realized that I'm seriously in need of cooler desks and tables and stuff like that. I don't know, for some reason I like how busy the diner wall is. It really clashes with the floor though. I don't know, I'm, I'm still still messing around with ideas. But yeah, that's, that's the arcade. And thank you for everyone who sent things in to help me put this together. Last night, one of my friends experienced her first meteor shower. And then I went there and I wished on stuff and star fragment showed up on my beach and luckily enough also an Aries fragment. So I'm super excited for that because now I have enough to craft my Aries chair or the, the rocking horse, whatever it's called, and then also have one left over that I want to put on display. There is a new conversation piece going around on the internet that there is a way to accurately find which trees will be more fertile. And by more fertile, I mean that if you bury 99,000 bells, you'll get 99 back, not 10,000 back. Nope. Uh. Not what I wanted to do. <sighs> well, tomorrow we start this then. Funny enough, just so you know, even if you decided to plant 99,000 bells every single day, even though you're gonna get days that are 10,000 bells, your money gained is going to outweigh your money lost. So you can just plant recklessly and you will make money. It's time for my daily recustomizing of my house in order to just get the, uh, the Nook Miles achievement. I'm making this guy do so much free construction to my house just so I can get a minuscule amount of miles from him. And today I am going to be demolishing this stone staircase and moving the campsite. Don't you think it's funny how to move that beautiful, complete museum, it's 50,000 bells, and to move the pieces of wood for the campsite is 50,000 bells? Perfect. Like we planned it or something. Oh, we get even more visitors now. It's been so long since I've had a visitor. Probably because I don't have amiibo cards. And probably because amiibo cards on eBay are going for ridiculous prices right now. Even like the NFC ones. Well, now that Paula's house has finally moved, we can complete our outdoor fitness area. And this is the wrong thing. Uh, I really wish I could move these apps around. <laughs> Cause I'm so used to where something is and the next thing I know I unlocked a new thing and now nothing is where I thought it was fantastic all right so I probably am going to edit all of 
everything that I just did out, but I spent about an hour here reorganizing what I wanted to do for here. I think I just came up with the best possible idea that I could for what I want to do here. So for the custom designs, this Gyarados canvas definitely did not work out. But now I'm thinking, whenever you go to a gym, they have the big soft cushiony floor, and if it's a real quality gym, under the cushiony floor, there's actually springs inside of there. And while I'm not going to be able to recreate a good workout mat, and I'm not allowed to place rugs outside, I decided on wood, even though wood, in theory, would, you know, be damaged from weights being dropped on it and stuff, but let's just pretend that it's fake wood, and it's soft cushions that's made to look like wood. Great. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, it's not uncommon for a gym to have a logo or insignia somewhere on the workout surface. So, uh, yeah, that didn't take as long as I thought it'd be. That was 15 minutes. And boom. Puff perfect Nook logo. Boom. I love it. I love it. Here's our little workout fitness area. We have our punching bag. We have our speed bag. We have our pull-up bar that I can't interact with. We have just this giant weight right here. This is 45, 25, and 10. 45, 25, that's 70, 80, double it, 160 plus bar. This is 205 pounds for deadlifts. That's not bad. That's a pretty reputable number. We have a digital scale hanging out over here. We have some boxes. We have the street light because, you know, we are kind of in the middle of everything going on. And we have a bike over here. And our chicken boy over here has a little birdhouse, a little bird bath for his bird friends because he's, you know, kind of a bird. And boom, there's our fitness area. And you know what? Now that I see all the metal for all the equipment, the metal fencing really works. I would love it if we could paint the metal fence, but alas, we cannot. So I have sort of a grandiose idea on what I would like to do for my house, which will be located up here amongst my Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The idea is I would like to have my house set back and somewhat center. And then between the house and my staircase down here, I kind of want to do like a courtyard. And with my courtyard idea, I, I actually may end up getting rid of this staircase here. And I've actually thought about getting rid of the third floor altogether. And if I had my third floor back, I would be able to extend that courtyard to include this area right here, which is beautiful and already fantastic. And to be honest, I, I've, I've racked my brain around this far too many times. Can I hit this? Oh boy, that, that made me happy. I don't need this little pond right here. I don't need that waterfall. I don't need that staircase being used up and I don't need this staircase being used up. If I bring it down one level, it's not gonna change anything. In fact, the only thing it's gonna do is make everything more accessible, which is good. The only thing that would be awkward is, I love this waterfall here. Absolutely love it. There's nothing more that I love than that waterfall and that whole aesthetic, right? So I said, screw it. <laughs> and now I'm actively terraforming and removing the third level here to see if I like it. And if I don't like it, then I take it from there. <sighs> well, I committed. I mean, I didn't fully commit, because obviously these are still here, so I still can remove those later. Or I could keep them if I change my mind. I have no idea yet. But essentially what I wanted to do is, I wanted to make a courtyard. With my house eventually back here, right in the middle. So it's like a beautiful, epic walk as you're walking through here to, to leave my house in this general area. Right? I know my house is gonna be out of the way. I've accepted that. That is now my fate. My very first step of my whole process here is I wanna center out where my house is gonna be located and then I counted out 
the amount of blocks in either direction. So I had a nice sort of symmetrical or, or asymmetrical layout of what I want to do. This side's going to be a little bit bigger. Plus, the way this lined up with being the very middle of walking out of my house works out really nicely for the feng shui. You know what I mean? So I like this as an entrance point, And then straight ahead is the inside of the house. Perfect. And ironically enough, we're about to block that entrance because I want to do a centerpiece fountain right here, gloriously. So let's work on that. Okay, so what I've decided for the card courtyard is this line right here is going to be the outermost fence that's going to prevent people from not going in through the entranceway. And then right here, we're going to have the fountain. We can stylize these. So by curving the inside corners, they kind of look like big old leaves. And I did the terracotta here and I did the sand in the middle. So when I put down this here fountain that I colored white, oh, oh, that looks crisp. It's very crisp. This one down here is eventually going to be the staircase going down and I'm probably going to have it go out here for my extra little sand path or grass path thing. By the way, every island has one of these little grass paths, these little grassy areas that sticks out. As you see right where I am at the top right of the map. What, what did you do there? Because I have no idea what I want to do there. <laughs> so like, what can you do in that little grassy area? Leave a comment down below or tweet me to let me know what you did with your little, your little grass path boy. With this layout, doesn't it look like there should be one more villager down here? I'd figured I'd update you a little bit, so I replaced the terracotta from the ground with bricks because using bricks, it, it's gonna break up better. Plus, I wasn't ending up walking on sand, and I decided I wanted to use sand out here for imperial fencing. This area is going to be a single fruit tree of four different types of fruit trees, none of them the native, surrounded by white flowers. Or maybe rare flowers. Maybe reds and purples and blacks, eventually golds and lily of the valley, but until I'm at that point in the game, it's just gonna be cool looking flowers. But I found that laying out the pathways of everything that I wanna lay down before I do lay it down, it definitely makes it easier for me. I like to envision it in my head and move things around without having to physically move things around, know what I mean? He seems to uh, really be a fan of his bird bath there. So a long time ago, someone was like, Hey, if you dye hay beds green, then they look like bushes. Yes, but no. <laughs> or hedges. Like, I would love to have like a nice tall hedge right here, but I don't know if those are in the game. Anyways, I crafted these lanterns because, golly, they look dope. And eventually, once I get the... Uh, the cool tropical LED tree, I might end up putting that there. I planted all four fruits for fruit trees. They have plenty of room to grow. I also decided to sort of mirror the hard pattern here for the dirt pattern. I planted all the pink flowers I have, the very small amount of blue flowers I have, the two types of black flowers I have, and the five types of orange flowers that I have. So each corner is gonna have its own color filled in very well. And then as far as the money trees that I have, I think I'm gonna end up, as weird as it sounds, put them in my orchard. You know, I have to say overall, I really like the way this came out. I'm probably, well, first things first, definitely need to destroy that staircase before I get my full vision. I think along here, I maybe wanna put white flowers because they're so, you know, easy to come by. And it's just kind of like, oh yeah, we have so many flowers, here's white ones. Or I might end up doing like, I don't know, potted plants or something else. I'm just not too sure exactly what yet. I do love the fountain centerpiece in the middle. I love the way that these come out sort of like big petals. And with the different flowers and the fruit trees when they're grown up, it's gonna add some height to this. The more I look at these lanterns, and the more I think the disgusting amount of stone that they cost to make, I think they're like 18 or 20 stone each to craft. So it's a really, really reckless spending of money. But being able to eventually swap these out with the giant LED palm trees, I think it would add a nice level of tackiness to our courtyard. Because, listen, everything needs more RGB, right? And then once our house is finally back here, and then we can start building out the other directions as well, 
maybe over here is where I'm gonna end up putting the money trees in the future once I know their pattern and other stuff. Ugh, so many things, but guys, Thank you so much for checking out this video. Friendly reminder, it's the last day to get your cherry blossoms in, so catch all that you can tonight. Try to get your recipe, shoot down balloons, talk to your villagers and everything else. If you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. Until next time, Austin John out.